I've got an Orangeburg native, uh, Kevin Raspberry, uh, here at New Perspectives to talk about his book, Decisions and Consequences, The Realities of Being a Man. Kevin, welcome to New Perspectives. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know you're an Orangeburg native. How'd you get uh, started in this project, uh, putting together a book? Um, well, what happens is uh, I mentor men and boys a lot, uh, especially men that had issues as far as like child support, um, domestic violence issues. Mm -hmm. And um, I began actually on accident because I used to go out and help people save their houses. Okay. Uh, I'm a certified housing counselor. So I uh, got to meet a couple of the guys and they were in this fatherhood uh, program in Columbia. Okay. So I just start to hang out with them and, and talk with them and, and just kind of and talk to them about what I grew up with, you know, my okay. father and my grandfather and uncles and such. And uh, and it began to have an impact on them. Okay. So um, I kind of carry that with me. And then, uh, you know, men and boys just start to kind of gravitate to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just kind of put two and two together. It sounds like you had a calling on your life. <laughs> And it sounds like you found it. Right. Or it found you. Exactly. And you fell right into the niche. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love it. Um, and, and, you know, the crazy thing is I don't even just talk to men. You know, now I ended up talking to women. Yeah. You know, how to receive a man that's got those issues, you know, and how to either leave him alone or work around it. Sure, sure. Well, you know, I've, we've had many discussions here on New Perspectives about domestic violence. And you did mention that, uh, that so many women uh, who are, uh, on the re the bad receiving end of domestic violence, many of them either don't report it, don't talk about it, or don't express it. And uh, so many men who are batterers, mm -hmm. people who actually engage in that, exactly. uh, you know, uh, it's like a hidden taboo right. kind of situation. Um, and you were able to begin to start talking to young people, you said. Exactly. And now you've authored a book. And yep. you've been writing, I guess the process is just writing pieces by pieces and pieces until you actually able to publish well actually um because i had been doing mentoring for a while mm -hmm. um you know once you know the idea you know came to me i sat down and i had all of the different pieces then you know so it, it just actually taking concentrated time and putting everything together because i'd had i'd had it all along right. but um looking at what is going on recently mm -hmm. um you know it's you know 60 to 40 percent which is a big gap to me, but 60 to 40 percent of domestic violence that's reported mm -hmm. are women. And, you know, just recently uh, in the news or somewhere I read. One out of four women or is it one out of three? I think it's one out of four women in America has been the. Has been abused mm -hmm. uh, or has been the victim of domestic violence. Right. Uh, and it goes un, unspoken. Mm -hmm. It goes, and, and in some cases and in some areas, as much as high as one out of three. Right. Um, and I'm glad you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Your The lives that you've been touching, have you been seeing any results from your direct impact or your direct contact? Well, absolutely, because I hold them responsible. You know, I ask them for results, what's going on. I, I not only talk to the man, I talk to the, the woman. Mm -hmm. And what happens, you know, you, you get all the excuses. I got pressures, I'm not employed, I got you know, this going on, you know, I got people watching me, I got, all, you know, it's, you know, my father used to tell me all the time, you know, um, a lie and nothing to tell and everybody got an excuse. That's right. I don't need, I don't need any more from you. That's everybody right. else That's got right. enough. And I try to tell them, you know, life is difficult enough without complicating it with excuses why not to live. That's right. You know, you, you right. have to, we got to do it the right way, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased. I've got Kevin Raspberry. He's a native of Orangeburg here on New Perspectives. And we're talking tonight about his new book, uh, Decisions and Consequences, The Realities of Being a Man. And uh, being a man is more than just, you know, people say, I'm a man. Young people just jump out and say, <laughs> I'm a man, you know. Exactly. Uh, and uh, that doesn't always necessarily, that doesn't work. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, it's a lot of it is kind of the environment we came in. OK. Um, being from the South, you know, we always. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Even though we can be talking to kids, mm -hmm. you know, I, I call my, my daughter, ma'am. Would you think that some of that has to do with the fact that. During the slavery period and, you know, let's go back there for a minute right. that 
African Americans were not considered even to be a man or a woman for that matter. Exactly. And uh, perhaps that demand for manhood came out of that, that expression, I'm a man. But I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, Kevin, I'm gonna be honest, this is coming from my own experience. Mm -hmm. um, as a young man, a young person in my teens, I thought that what it meant to being a man was how many women I dated, mm -hmm. um, what my clothes looked like or what my car might have looked like. But you know, as you begin to get older, or even how many children, some in some right. instances, not, not as far as I'm concerned, but some men felt how many children you have right. is what makes you a man. But then the reality hits you, and you and I both will agree, a man becomes a man when he's able to be a man, which means defending your wife or your family, mm -hmm. raising and supporting your children, doing all of those things which embody and encompass being a man. Mm -hmm. And even though we have had some frustrations in our lives, doesn't mean you go back to the home and become the source of cruelty exactly, or, or disaster. I see you went to Claflin University. Yes, sir. What advice do you have for other people that you would be interested in or who may be interested in, in publishing or authoring a, a book? Um, my advice is know um, your calling. Right. Um, have good research. Mm -hmm. You know, do focus groups. You know, it's you can you can write a book from your perspective. But that's all it is, is your pers your perspective. Right. But when you talk to other people, and you gotta, people. right, and you have to do it um, in a vast situation. You just can't interview ten and say that's what I think. You know, the the opinion of everybody is, and so that's that's basically what I think is that you have to do your accurate research. You have to be patient, um, especially in publishing. I, that's one of the things that I had to learn is that. Just because somebody will publish a book doesn't necessarily mean that's the right publisher for you. And that's one question I always ask uh, authors when they come on New Perspectives. Um, there's some scams that exist out there sometimes in publishing. Mm -hmm. how, would, how would you warn somebody against that kind of stuff? Do you? Um, what I would say is when they're asking you for a boatload of money up front, um, when they can't um, show that they use, you know, like say, for instance, my author has thirty thousand outlets for my books okay. to go. Your publisher, um, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and the publisher, and so a lot of times, what happens is we get excited that somebody wants to publish the book, and we don't look at all of the fine things. What about your royalties? Right, the fine um, print, yeah. Right. So, yeah. and and then at some some points, a lot of publishers wants to change the book mm -hmm. all all together. Okay. Um, they want a different audience. That's good advice. Right. Yeah, so, that's good you advice. Know, you got to yeah. stay true to yourself, and that's that's what you need to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I know that you also have a not-for-profit organization tell us something about that how that how that whole thing is going um the non non-profit is future solutions um okay. and say it again, again i'm sorry future solutions future solutions and okay. a lot of what i do is is i help people to save their homes okay but at the same time another element of it is doing financial counseling with okay. men right. um you know we have to be responsible because one of the breakdowns of the family structure is the pressure of finances exactly and so I, I can see how you've come full circle. Mm -hmm. I want to say that the creative spirit or the creative spirit has come to you and used all of your skills exactly. in all your areas. And that and that's and that's great to know. I know that you're good friends with a good friend of the show who is Howard Jackson. Oh yeah. He's the um uh commissioner for mm -hmm. Board of Elections here, Board right. of uh, Registers. And uh, you grew up with him in his neighborhood. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm glad that you're here with us on A New Perspective. I see that you also, you're a father, you have uh, your children are Terrence, Yolanda, Yolanda, mm -hmm. Tyler, and Donna Raspberry. That's right. And unfortunately, you've moved to Columbia on us. Yeah, yeah, but I, I have a permanent residence here. Okay. Um, so, so I'm back and forth. Are you, a, are, you a, are you a voter here also? Do you vote no, here? No, I'm not a voter here anymore. Okay. Well, yeah. that's, well, that's our loss. <laughs> that's our loss. But we know that home is right here. I know your parents oh, yeah. and, and family members are still here. And I'm very in excited about the new book. Oh, yeah. Um, we, w we hope that you'll bring it to the, the libraries all over and do a reading here at the Orangeburg Library. Please keep us informed. Let us know when it's out, where it's going, where you're going. Uh, we met you online. Mm -hmm. um, you're a friend of this community, uh, and uh, we want to get the word out there about you. But how do people contact you? Uh, actually, they can contact me, uh, Kevin Raspberry at gmail.com or tqsoriginals.com. 
Thank you for coming to New Perspectives. Uh,